After shaking off a massive sound wave blast, Luther, Wonder Woman, and Superman engaged their Justice League who are still under the influence of Patient Zero. The Amazo virus has gained sentience and is now out to spread its influence across the world. They show very little interest in Wonder Woman and Superman, but Luther, well, the newest member of the Justice League, can be exposed and influenced by Amazo. Luther will join them or he will die. Wonder Woman, knowing that their options are very limited, demands for Superman to trust Luther and his plans. Luther has only one more chance to prove himself. Wonder Woman engages the infected Justice League, but the Flash, with his super speed, easily overpowers her. Meanwhile, Superman arrives to give Luther a sample of his blood in hopes that the billionaire could find a cure. The situation gets worse as the infected civilians has arrived and breached the walls of the emergency camp. The Flash continues to pummel the Princess of Paradise Island, but suddenly he gets blasted from behind and the Flash turns into a human popsicle. Steve, Trevor, and his army has enlisted the aid of Captain Cold to rescue the uninfected. Elsewhere, Superman holds off a horde of civilians while Luther creates a cure from the Man of Steel's blood. We discover that Luther can indeed create a cure in minutes, but it will take days to create a cure for everyone that is infected. Unfortunately, they don't have days. Time is against them and they need a cure now. An unlikely team-up would present itself as Captain Cold and Wonder Woman battles back to back against their foe. Cold, without Superman's moral compass, blasts Patient Zero with his freeze gun, but to Wonder Woman's surprise, she notices that the other infected pause for a brief moment. Superman never used his freeze breath against the infected for fear that he would hurt the innocent. The Man of Steel with his super hearing now understands their weakness and leaves Luther behind to target Patient Zero with his cold breath. He arrives in time and, with his super breath, Supes manages to freeze Patient Zero in place. The rest of the infected falls like dominoes and the battle is over. Days later, and the Justice League along with the rest of the population have been cured. Luther's vaccine is being mass produced and is being shipped around the world to contain this threat. But there is a new threat on the horizon. 3% of the cured populace has retained their powers. More metahumans are now free in the world. On the bright side, there will be more heroes. But light and darkness comes hand in hand and more villains will surely rise. Elsewhere, Patient Zero is held captive with Luther and Superman looking on. The cure did not work on this infected individual. Luther concludes that the doctor is gone and all that is left is this infected sentient virus. After being congratulated by the president for the cure, Luther is now in charge of keeping Patient Zero captive for testing. Further testing will yield more knowledge of this virus and thus preventing any potential further outbreaks. The patient looks up and speaks to Luther. He says that the doctor is gone and that this flesh is now his incubator. He is still mutating and one day, Luther will fall prey to the virus. He will spread. He will kill. He is a mazo. Meanwhile, Neutron is cured from the virus but is still sick and will die soon. He tells Steve Trevor that he wants to make a deal with Luther. Neutron wants something before he dies. For this trade, he will expose the person who placed the hate on Luther. Steve Trevor, while reaching for his gun, states, I guess it's true. If you want something done right, you have to do it yourself. On the League's satellite, Jessica Cruz expresses her concerns are not being in control. The Flash introduces her to a man that knows a lot about power rings. Barry Allen introduces her to Green Lantern Hal Jordan. The ex-Justice League member states, So where is Batman? I want to see the look on his face when he hears Green Lantern's back. What's going on guys? Welcome to Comic Island. My name is Joey and today we are reviewing and recapping the Justice League issue 39. So this is it, we have concluded another story arc for the Justice League. When everything is said and done, the everlasting effect this issue has right now is that more metahumans are born. We didn't get a specific number of how many were infected, but we know that 3% retained their powers. Too bad Batman isn't part of the 3%. Or maybe he is? <laughs> nah, I doubt it. <laughs> Alright, so let's go over a few things that work so well for me. I love this twist that Amazo virus is sentient. It seems so creepy that Luther has created life in a test tube, and now it found its way in this poor doctor. So we got the pre-Flashpoint Amazo as an android, but in the new 52, Amazo started out as a virus and now has formed into this thing. I love this scene where Amazo blocks Luther's attempt at a blast and then he redirects the same blast back at him. 
So Luther says that he got the okay from the president to do some testing on Patient Zero, but I gotta assume that Luther will try to find a way to weaponize Amazo if he can. I can't imagine a future story arc where Amazo escapes and starts wreaking havoc for the Justice League again. Okay, so we got a very interesting scene with Steve Trevor reaching for a gun. We still don't know who placed the hit on Luther, but from this scene, we gotta assume that Trevor was in on it and Neutron is now dead. I know this scene should be more of a reveal, but I'm not a fan of this character, Steve Trevor. And let's face it, we will probably won't be too surprised when the person's identity is revealed. I'm still banking on Leland Luther to be the mastermind behind it all though. We got some good Captain Cold action in this issue. Remember back in a few issues where Captain Cold had a private conversation with Mirror Master? In public, he goes on and says that he is reformed and now is one of the good guys, but what's Captain Cold without his rogues? It's only a matter of time till we see Cold back with his teammates. And also, when Luther hired on Captain Cold, he took a bunch of blood and DNA samples. We never got an explanation as to why Luther did this. We also saw Luther talking to Owlman and enlisting his help for something. With all of this being said, Luther has been the star of the show for me. We are left in suspense as to what his true motives are, and I'm loving this so far. Okay, so the last thing I want to discuss is the return of Hal Jordan. For those who don't know, the Guardians are dead except for two, and the new leader of the Green Lantern Corps is Hal Jordan. But to beat an old foe, he had to enlist the help of Guy Gardner and his Red Lanterns. Yeah, Guy Gardner is the leader of the Red Lanterns. So the Green Lanterns won with the Red's help, but for a trade-off, Sector 2814 is now under the protection of the Red Lanterns, meaning off-limits to Greens except for Simon Boz. So with Hal here on Earth, he is breaking their terms. I would love to see the Green and Red Lanterns battle it out in the pages of the Justice League, but before we even see that possibility, next issue will be the prologue to the Dark Side War. Take a look at the cover art, we got the Anti-Monitor and Darkseid looking like they are ready for war. I'm super excited for this since we haven't seen the Anti-Monitor ever since the end of Forever Evil. Alrighty, so what did you think about the ending to the Amazo virus? And do you prefer the pre-52 Amazo or this one? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and as always, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and I'll see you next time in Justice League issue 40.